truth and endurance. Be forever. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. With direction as well as protection. God knows how, when, and where, and He knows our every situation. Yes. Look somebody dead in the eye and say, I don't know what you come to do. But I come to clap my hands. I come to clap. takes all of that. Yes. You just need to get a grip. Yeah. Right now. Right. And join the party. Yeah. A Holy Ghost party. Yes. Father, in yeah. thy blessed name, we commend our spirit that nothing of me but all of you needs to be the words that these your children will hear on today. We've had a glorious time and still lifting your name up. But for a few minutes, Master, lower us down into your bosom that we may touch the hem of your God. Thank you for those visitors that have come on today to fellowship with us. And we thank you for the spirit. Thank you for the healing. We thank you, Father, for the prodigal son. We thank you for everything that you're about to do. But then, Lord, bless my spouse, my wife, my honey bun. And my companion. That we may continue to do the work that you have called us to do. For the night is drawing nigh. It's getting late in the evening. And the sun is going down. Bless us now. And Lord, as we endeavor to do your precious will, let some soul leave here different than from whence they came. Thank you for those who, who, Father, who don't know you. We pray that something will be said or done that will prick their spirit or have them come crying, Lord, what shall I do to be saved? Yes, this we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God, you may be seated. We're not going to hold you long. We, we have been in the phase of worship. For a little bit here, God has a plan. His plan is a perfect plan. Do I have a witness? Amen. When His plan is working, amen, we ought to sit aside, pay attention, and get on board. Amen? Amen. We're kind of waiting for all the moves back here because somehow Satan finds a way. And there's preaching time. There's a lot. Of, the only movement that should be going on is you moving up toward the kingdom of God. And somehow folk get impatient, jittery. A lot of times it's the bathroom break. But the most important time, this, the reason we came here, Amen. is because of the word of God. Yes. Everything else is a formality. Do I have a witness? Amen. Look at your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, if you got to go somewhere, you got to go now before the preacher starts. You got to go somewhere. You got to go down before the preacher starts. Right, give God a hand clap of prayer. We've had two sermonettes and a partial already. Oh. Amen. So I'm not going to hold you too much longer, but you can move by the Holy Spirit. We have to be prepared uh, to continue to keep the will of God. Certainly thank the deacons for, for the yoke of breaking and cracking the spirit this morning that the people of God have come to the fellowship. Now I want you to take off your shoes, take off the mask, and take off anything else that's going to keep you from getting a blessing. Amen. 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 The word of God was read to us. Beautiful. And we can venture into what the Lord is saying in this one verse, but this verse is saying a whole lot that I believe many folk will admit. And it describes that this very 
clarification here. It opens up ye as in you and I are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior, it says savior there, but salt in that day was described as a great need for it to preserve anything that they had. Because they didn't have refrigeration in that time. So it was used to preserve. But the Bible here says, if you have lost the sea, wherewith shall it be salt? In other words, there's not too much you can get out of it. You don't have no savior. But I'm not going to replace that word, but it's really talking about flavor. Are you there? Yes. Well, I have a witness. Yes. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot. I'd like to talk to you preach the word, and teach it all in the same breath on this subject. Don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your flavor. There's so much in this little parable. This morning won't give us enough time to, to really tell it all, but, but the main thing the thrust is the distinctiveness that, that this word gives us, that Saul is distinctively different from the thing upon which you may put it. And by nature, we've heard of salt mines. But this purpose here in the parable is totally different. And it applies to every believer. Do I have a witness? Yes. By nature, believers are new creatures born of God. Am I right about it? Amen. Supposedly, we're supposed to have a different taste, a different flavor, a different circumstances, and our whole objective is to preserve God's people until He comes back again. Amen. So we become the salt of the earth. Here, Jesus was speaking clearly to the disciples, talking about their character, and that they were described as a place of salt, or a very important factor to the human race. And their mission was to, to go out and be the salt of the earth. And doing so, if they didn't do what he had sent them to do, and we are all so believers are supposed to be his disciples. Am I right about it? Yeah. And if we are not preserving, if the world is not getting enough flavor of Jesus or the kingdom, then we fall short of the glory of God. And we're losing our flavor. In other words, what I'm trying to get you to see that you are the salt of the earth. That you are the reason that God is coming back to get his people. You are the very purpose. And you are called to be that salt amongst the universe. That we would go out, preach, teaching and baptizing in the name of the Father. So therefore, if you have lost your flavor, yeah. oh, help me. Yes. Then we not only are in trouble, the Bible says, it is then for good for nothing. Amen. What are you here for? What, what are you doing to nourish this earth with the salt? Not table salt, but the preservation or the preserving and keeping up. You know how we used to hang the hams in the building? Right. We salt them down and we call it curing it until it was ready to be eaten. Yes. And if we put enough salt on it, it will hold it for a winter, maybe even a few summers in a cool environment. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. That's right. Amen. So we have to preserve God's people 
until he comes. And the question in this passage here, not by choice, if you desire to or if you want to, but the Bible says ye, meaning you and I, are the salt of the earth. God sent you and I here to preserve his people yes. until he comes back. Yes. And if you're not doing nothing about it, then the Bible says you're good for nothing. Right now. I don't know no other way to put it. And only knowing the truth will set you free. Yes. So, meaning the disciples, the believers, this character is like, it's very important. And these believers are called and they're designed to, to, to be the, not only the salt of the earth, but they must have a flavor about them that is connecting where God people will have a chance to be saved. It was once said that, Lord, I wouldn't go to that church ever again because somebody lied on me. Somebody mistreated me. Somebody talked about me. Somebody hurt my feelings. Well, what did you do while you were here? What, what did you bring to the table? What are you bringing to the table today? This is not an argument about anything. It is about that what God commissioned you and I to do, you can't get away from it. Amen. And if you're not doing anything toward the kingdom or the soul that preserves the word of God until Jesus comes, then you're doing nothing but holding and taking up space. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. If this was a crowd of 3,000, and the only way we could get an amen that was if somebody say amen, then there is no salt flavor in the air. Right. Somebody ought to know that the Lord is the shepherd. Amen. Somebody ought to know all Christ, the salt rock, they're going to stand. their heart out just to get an amen. Hallelujah. But if there was enough flavor in the place of worship, amen. Amen. folks would just catch on fire. Yes. If there was enough flavor in what he's done for you, then you ought to be able to witness to tell somebody that the Lord is doing great things. Amen. Can I get a witness? Is he doing great things for you? Has he done great things for you? He's not keep us. Oh, every time I think about it, what he's done for me, my soul cries out, thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, all that you're about to do. I've got to tell somebody that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. When we describe and we look at this word, salt, salt is, it preserves, it keeps things from going bad and decaying. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. It cleanses. It has a way of disinfecting things. Believers like you and I, just as salt, are to cleanse and preserve the world. You don't have to go out into the world to be like the world. But you go out to preserve the world so it becomes a better world. Yes. If there was enough salt, meaning Jesus, in at least five or ten of us in here, Come on. then we would be living in a better community. Yes. And you multiply the community times the state, the town, the counties, and the 52, there ought to be some folk and some happy campers talking about the name of Jesus. Yeah. It ought to be on every street corner that when somebody yeah. says Jesus, somebody want to just stop and break out in the shelf. Yeah. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to be saying, Lord, I thank you just for what you're doing in my life. Yeah. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? Is there somebody here that knows that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you? Every now and then, your flavor ought to rise that the world And oppressed 
and rest over and can't even get an amen out. There ought to be something tingling on the inside. If he raised you up from a sick bed,